you've tuned in to the 49ers Rush Podcast, and here is your host, John Chapman. All right, 49ers fans, we are here to get you ready for this weekend's game against the Arizona Cardinals. It's going to be a fun one, and again, uh, the 49ers are in dire need to get this victory this week. We do have the Cardinals. They are the only team left in the entire NFL without a win. The only ones. And on top of that, the NFL is kind of downplaying this game big time. We are the late afternoon game. Kickoff will be in the afternoon. As I said, it is a home game. And if you go back to whenever the schedule was just released, I I broke down the entire schedule and rated every game 1-16 to before the season started. This one was number 16. This is the most winnable game of our schedule, and we are in need of this victory big time as are the Cardinals. It is an in-divisional game, which you usually want to be careful with, but Vegas came out, and they are saying this is going to be the lowest-scoring game of the week. 41 points is the over-under, which is, again, it's basically saying it's going to be, uh, we are favored by 4.5 points at home, so you can kind of do the math there. (laughs) We're basically supposed to get 20 about 22 points, and they're supposed to get about 18, and that's just what it is. And uh, it, it's it's not going to be the most exciting games by Vegas standards, but who cares? So what I want to do this episode is go over some injuries and updates to practice schedules, let us know who's in, who's out, and then we will be meeting with our resident scout at Cado Clayton, and he's going to be breaking down some game film schemes, players to watch, and all that stuff. But it's kind of fun because... We see this team twice a year, so we know what they do. They do have a new coaching staff, and they are running a new defensive scheme, and they have a rookie quarterback, so this is going to be an interesting game to say the least. So without further ado, let's jump into the injuries for us, and it is a long list. I'm looking at 49ers.com and their team injury report, and I have to scroll. I have to scroll down to list All of the different people. So let's start with the huge negative news. We had two players that did not practice at all this week so far. That is Joe Staley with the knee issue, which it seems like it's going to be an issue. I do think that he is going to play because he's just Joe Staley. Um, He's not a guy that needs to practice in order to play. He he has shown that he can just show up and do what he needs to do. And also Dante Pettis, who they've already ruled out. Dante Pettis is going to be out. But he is not one of the pivotal positions right now. Basically, we'll put Trent Taylor back at punt return. Uh, He'll be back there almost exclusively the entire game. And we would, I'm sure, you know, we've been getting born many a lot of snaps so we're going to be okay we're going to be okay there now let's go on to the limited participants in practice uh matt Breida, he has been a limited participant back-to-back practices and they have it listed as his shoulder not his knee so that's good news i believe you got to take what you can there But we got to get this guy the ball more. He's averaging about nine carries per game, and he is third in the NFL in rushing, averaging over seven yards per carry on the season. He has been amazing. I'm hoping we get this guy the ball more often. Adrian Colbert, he practiced fully. This is great. Even Kyle Shanahan came back and said, you know, obviously DJ Reed was back there as the starter played all of last week. But Adrian Colbert's going to get the opportunity to play with back-to-back full practices with his hip. He will get the start. And Joshua Garnett, who we saw week one, he kind of battled through that toe issue. He has back-to-back full practices. And again, kind of the main issue with him has just been staying healthy, but we could use him. He won't be starting, but man, just imagine having depth across the offensive line. We need it big time. Marquise Goodwin, limited practice, limited participant after not practicing at all on Wednesday. So this is great news. He will play. Um, It just looks like he's going to play. But, man, we need this guy to be healthy. We have so many, I don't know, we have so many different guys without elite talent. He is somebody that can stretch the field. 
So really hoping that we get him out there uh, and just be completely healthy. Mike McClinchy, limited participant. He's going to be okay. He didn't practice on Wednesday. He's going to be just fine. Alfred Morris, back-to-back full practices is very helpful. Pearson, limited practice both times. He's going to be just fine to go. And then we get to Western Richburg. Uh, His knee, he was having problems early on in the game, and it showed. He had a terrible, terrible game all in all. Didn't practice on Wednesday. Limited participant. He'll be able to play through it. He already did, but we need him healthy. More positive news. Richard Sherman is back. He didn't practice Wednesday, but he got a limited practice in this week. Man, we need him so bad. Our secondary just got depleted. We need him out there. Jaquiski Tart again. Full practice, full practice. He is going to be good to go uh watch his shoulder whenever he comes up and makes some big hits now i will say this you know my player of the game as far as defense and the mvp last week was exum so uh, i'm sure that tart will get the start but if he struggles at all i'm hoping to see exum in there pretty soon so akilo witherspoon also the last injury person that we will talk about he was full practice back-to-back days Man, ankle and a hip, we need him to be 100%. Uh, Last week was probably his worst week as a professional in two years. And, man, we've got to have better play in that secondary. If not, uh, we're going to make this rookie quarterback look good, which I, I, I believe in Josh Rosen's talent. But he has limited weapons on offense just like we do. And our secondary is going to be the key this game. If, if our secondary can limit them to yards after the catch and a low percentage, completion percentage, I think we get this win. So it's going to be up to them. I would say pass rush, but we know that's non-existent for the 49ers, unfortunately. So hopefully we get Buckner back. He's had two back-to-back bad games. We need him to come and show out. So... And, you know, we talked about this being the easiest game on our schedule. If we fast forward a little bit, it gets scary pretty damn quick. Next week, we travel to Green Bay and play the Packers. And then after that, we play the Los Angeles Rams. So it's not going to get easy. And, you know, we are 1-3 and three right now. This is a must win for the 49ers. Uh, not necessarily because, you know, 2-3, and three, we, we still got a shot. Definitely, we're in a very poor division. But if we start letting go of these winnable games our schedule gets pretty rough um so we need to get this win we need to get this win and before we jump on with our scout clayton i want to talk to you about our sponsor my bookie you guys have heard me talk about these guys and our time with them is almost up but please head over there it's a legit site if you are a betting person at all this is for you if you're not a betting person you want to try it great but uh obviously i'm not trying to push anybody into betting but if you do bet This is the site you need to go with, MyBookie, M-Y-B-O-O-K-I-E. The best thing about them, when you win, they pay. Very easy to get money in and out. And if you sign up right now, if you don't have an account, and use our promo code RUSH100, R-U-S-H-100, no spaces, R-U-S-H-100, they match your initial deposit dollar for dollar. That is all there for you. So head over there to MyBookie, start placing bets. They got all kinds of fun stuff that you can bet on, stuff that it's fun. Sometimes I look through the prop bets and I'm like, all right, that's pretty funny. Um, You know, so-and-so will get more than four carries in the first quarter or, you know, fill in the blank. There's all kinds of stuff. So if you feel like you've got a decent understanding of the game and you want to head over there and make some money, that's my bookie. All right, 49ers fans, we are back. And let me just tell you right now, um, if you have been following the 49ers Rush podcast for a while, this is a game I have had circled on my calendar, yeah, I went through and I ranked every single matchup 1 through 16 as far as difficulty goes. This is our easiest game of the year. Um, playing against the Arizona Cardinals at home. I understand it's a division opponent. But we have our buddy, at, uh, Clayton Cadu. Clayton Cadu is here with us to break down the game. He's with us every week and just brings so much knowledge. We really appreciate everything he does for us. So, Clayton, how's life, brother? Things are good, John. How about you? I'm doing good. I, I've learned a lot about your native land, Canada, in nice. recent times. You guys have 10, I believe you call them provinces. Is that correct? That's correct. We have 50 states. Is, is there a difference between province and a state? Not in my mind. All right. There we go. Boom. <laughs> They're the same thing. Uh, just different terminology. I'm sure there's like 50 people listening right now like, no, that's wrong. But that's okay. Uh, you can at him and tell him that he is wrong. Where can they at you at, Clayton? You get me at Kadu Clayton, so that's at <laughs> C A D I E U X. 
Clayton? Dude, I love the Canadian accent. It is worth gold, I am sure. The ladies love it. All right, Clayton, so <laughs> let's jump right into the game. We have the Arizona Cardinals. They are, man, they're not doing good. Oh, and four. Um, they are in last place. And are they the only winless team um, in the entire NFL right now? I believe they are. I yes, I'm they looking are, yeah. at it here. The only winless team and we get the privilege of playing them this week at home so uh let's jump in right off the bat clayton give me a brief summary on this team that we get to play this week we get to play them twice a year so uh, what do we got man well they're struggling obviously being 0 and 4 and all they are the 25th ranked defense the bad part about it, they're 27th in run D and 29th in passing D as well. <laughs> so, so we're they, really, uh, really bad at run defense, but it's okay because we're also worse at pass defense. It's just bad and bad. Defensively, they are an absolute catastrophe. Um, and, and offensively, I think they're worse, right? Yeah, they're not. They're, they're struggling big time. Yeah, so dead last in offense. <laughs> they are the 32nd as far as points scored. Yeah, it's bad, man. It's just bad. They've only scored 37 points so far this year, and they have allowed 94. So they're basically getting outscored 3-1 to one every week. Yeah, it's rough. Now, they almost won last week Who they uh, against Seattle. Um, I, I know you've watched that game a few times. What were your takeaways? Uh, just their very aggressive defense, actually. And just they just struggle moving the ball. Uh, it doesn't help with Rosen first start and all and stuff like that. But uh, just wasn't moving the ball right and just couldn't get anything really going. Yeah. So all right, let's kind of focus a little bit. Uh, they won twenty to seventeen over the Seahawks, and that should just be a testament to how bad the Seahawks are. Clayton, I know that you watched the game a few times last week between Seattle and the Cardinals. Uh, Seattle barely got away with a win here, twenty to seventeen, which is a testament just to. Man, how bad and how far this Seattle team has fallen. Uh, give me just a couple you – know, how how'd the game when – you watched it a few times. Tell me a little bit about the game and how you felt about how Arizona played. Just It wasn't very exciting at all. Um, Ro- Rosen looked lost, which kind of – it's expected, being rookie and all, being his first start. Um, and just, yeah, same thing as Seattle. It was just a boring game all around to really watch. Gotcha. Yeah, I think this is going to be the NFC West outside of the Rams. Um I still oh, they're so good. They're very, very good. <laughs> and I think the 49ers are, you know, the second best team in that division, even without Jimmy G. Yeah. And it's going to be bad. And even Vegas says it's going to be bad. We are the lowest spread or over under game in the NFL this week with just 41 points projected by Vegas and the money market. So they're expecting boring. So, Let's get into not necessarily boring, but let's talk about this terrible defense for the Ra- uh, for the Cardinals. Tell me about them, man. Break them down. They're a very aggressive defense, that's for sure. But unfortunately, they could be aggressive all they want, but their run defense is not good. Um, they they're allowing the most touches to running backs out of all the teams this year. Running backs are averaging 141 yards per game, and that's the second most in the league. Yeah, and I think a lot of it has to do with game scripts because they're falling ahead early in almost all their games besides this last one. So when teams yeah. get ahead early, all right, let's just run out the clock, just give it to your number two and number three guy. And I think this is huge for us because we have Matt Breida, who is number three in the entire NFL in rushing. He, he's going to be big this week. If he is healthy, um, yeah, I that's... really do think he can crush it this week. The, the key is health. That, that's and what the, it comes down to. And the Cardinals, uh, they've given up seven touchdowns already to running backs this year, too. So I like the sound of that. That sounds like that could be the uh, alien cure to our red zone deficiency. Hopefully we can punch <laughs> it into the red zone because it, it's a big problem for the 49ers for sure. Now, Steve Wilkes is their new head coach. Not the biggest fan. I love him as a defensive coordinator. But, man, this team just seems poorly coached top to bottom. Talk to me about the scheme uh, that they run on the defensive side. Well, they did switch it this year when Wilkes came in, um, switched it to a 4-3 system. And in that system, he ended up getting having Chandler Jones switch from linebacker to defensive end. That way, uh, he's just able to rush the passer on every down. Yeah, and if you go back to his days at Syracuse or even with the New England Patriots, Chandler Jones is unreal. Um, he is a top nice. five defensive uh, pass rushing specialist, led the NFL in sacks last year, just an absolute freak. That guy's unreal. His whole entire family's unreal, to be honest with you. Both of his brothers 
professional athletes. They do all kinds of crazy stuff. So uh, their linebackers, though, I noticed that they use their in the 4-3. Uh, they like to focus on just bringing four guys or bringing one, but they kind of drop their linebackers into coverage a lot. Is that correct? Yeah, they, they drop them all the time. I think that was uh, one of the reasons they wanted to move Jones to defensive end because give him that chance to get at the quarterback. Right. And, and so when they blitz, where do they uh, usually blitz from or how do they set that up? Well, they bring the they bring nickel pressure off the right edge. So the defensive they, right? Uh yes. Okay. And uh they use they have two mug backs in the A gap, which makes it hard for uh running backs and centers to know where where the blitz is coming from exactly and who's coming for them. Yeah, and I think we'll see that a lot with CJ under the center and missing line calls. We missed a couple last week. But that's basically where the you know the Mike and the Will linebacker we do this. Reuben Foster does this a lot, where he comes up like he's blitzing through the A gap, but then he'll bail out. And that the idea is it looks like seven guys are coming, but in reality it's only four or five, and they're hoping to confuse the line and maybe get a free blitzer out of that. Oh, and so, if you if you if you can hold Buchanan, he's gonna he's gonna get at CJ quite a bit this week. Right now, what about their secondary coverage scheme? What we know they're a four three, but what do they do on the back end? It was weird, but I was looking over film and I started noticing um, they play cover three different than 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 a lot of teams do. Like in most cases, their safety is back up, and the team is when the team's going to blitz. But with the with the Cardinals, the safeties don't move until the ball is snapped, and from there, they have their deep safety come in and cover. While the other safety drops down and plays middle third from the middle of the field. And then that way they either they force the quarterback to get rid of the ball quickly or he's going to end up getting getting sacked. Yeah, a lot of the teams, basically their mentality on the back end when they blitz, they go cover zero, is safety, get depth, and you're kind of the umbrella to stopping a touchdown. They don't do this. Um, their idea or mentality is we have a great pass rush. You're not going to be able to get the ball out deep. So we're not going to back up our safety. We're going to keep them in the middle third instead of the deep third, and we're going to try to get a turnover that way. It's kind of a it's, – it's a very unique perspective, but it works if they get there quick. And if they yeah, don't, then you can hit them for a huge home run play. Yeah, and it's, it's, tough, to, it's tough to get the, those big shots downfield, though, in a case like that too, right? Because – if he gets the ball rid of the ball quickly, that's what maybe five five yards as soon as he the ball snapped. And he's, he's gonna have a go guy quick. in his face as soon as exactly. he catches it. Yeah. So the idea is to eliminate what's called the hot route or the hot read, which is where the quarterback is under center and he sees, Oh crap, more guys are coming than I can block, which is great. Again, if you go back to basketball, like if somebody's being double teamed, that means somebody's open. So you'll see the quarterback have some kind of verbal signal where they yell something or pat their head or give a hand gesture, which means I'm coming to you quick. <laughs> and so their defense is kind of designed to stop that. Um, but it, it doesn't work. It hasn't been working anyway. Everything they do is not working. But they do have some stud players. Who are the two players on the defensive side that kind of stand out that, hey, we need to watch out for? Well, you can't really talk about the defense unless you're talking about uh, Patrick Peterson. He's uh, He's been good. He's uh, uh, pro, pro football has him as the sixth best cornerback in the league. His catch rate, he's given up 50% catch rate, and uh, he's had one one pick this year so far. He is amazing. I'll tell you that right now. Patrick Peterson, one of my favorite players in the NFL, just by how hard he plays and the challenges is, that he takes. He is unreal. I love the way that guy plays. Uh, what about uh, the front seven? Anybody in the front seven? We already talked about Chandler Jones, so is there anybody else we need to watch out for? Uh, yeah, their edge rusher, Benson Mayowa. Yeah, sure. Why <laughs> That's not? That's how you say his name. Sounds about right. Um, he's actually he's he's had ten tackles already for for a loss this year, and he's had two sacks. Um, PFF has him graded just outside the top twenty five edge rushers. So, and he is their number two guy. <laughs> that's outside of Chandler Jones. So, and that's the, I will say this: the strength of our offensive line, as we all know, is our tackles, and so we should be able to isolate that. If Joe Staley is healthy, which it seems like he's going to be able to play this week, which we already talked about, but um, yeah, it, this is it's kind it's it's a favorable matchup across the board for the 49ers. Our strength should neutralize their strength in an ideal world, um, but this is going to be interesting for a rookie, Mike McGlinchey. He's he's going to have his hands full this week. Now let's go to the other side. 
Uh, give me two guys that we are going to take advantage of, and this is where we need to be targeting. Well, I'm definitely going to pick on both cornerbacks. Uh, we got Buda Baker and Jamar Taylor. Man, uh, I Jamar... loved Buda Baker coming yeah. out. He was one of my favorite players out of Washington. He's kind of that uh, nickel slash strong safety slash linebacker slash whatever guy. Yeah, there's took... a lot of talk of, of him coming out of college. He took Tyron Matthews' job, and so they let him go because Buda was playing so good last year, but he has struggled this year in this new defensive scheme. Yeah, um, he's he's probably – he's targeted the most the most on the team, um, and he's given up an 84.22% uh, catch rate on 19 targets this year. So, Yeah, so that that's awesome. Who else? We got another guy? Uh, the one to pick on I think the most is going to be Jamar Taylor. Um, he's ranked as the – 150th cornerback out of 200 with a defensive grade of a 39.4. We call that Dante Johnson numbers. Um, <laughs> that is terrible. Uh, yeah, he's uh, he, same thing. High uh, mid 80s and catch rate on 18 targets this year. So that's usually cool. any all, all these big plays that come come against this uh, Arizona defense is usually on his side of the ball when it comes to comes to receivers. So. And I'll say this, man, like the defense is rough. We should have success. Uh, Kyle Shanahan's going to have success against almost everybody as far as yardage goes. We just got to get in the end zone. Red zone offense. We got to stop settling for field goals, and we got to start scoring touchdowns. So that's kind of where we're at. Now, uh, very good. Love that, man. That is awesome. Keep an eye out for those players. Now let's jump over to the other side of the ball there, offense. Um, Man, again, dead last offense as far as yards go. Uh, they struggle and I, I you know I pulled up pro football focuses grades and who would have guessed <laughs> Josh Rosen is their number one graded player after a week on offense now his grades only 69.7 which is very very low um, but that's kind of where we're at so to walk me through some of the strengths for their offense man well, like I said, I was I was watching film, and I'm not, I'm not sure if they have any strengths anywhere. Obviously, they got you know David Johnson stuff like that. He's not having the greatest year, but like I said, they're they're close they're close to the bottom in both running and passing offense this year. So weak weaknesses have been so far this year have been the run game. They've only they've only rushed for just over 260 yards and two touchdowns in four games. So Ooh. like 66 yards rushing per game. That's uh, not very good. Their O line, obviously another struggle. They've given up eight sacks in four games, and their passing their passing game is only averaging 154 yards a game. So, I'm not sure what uh, what strength to take out of any of that is. <laughs> well, I, I do know that I, I feel like if we were an Arizona Cardinals podcast right now, we would be in the same place saying the 49ers will fix <laughs> all of our woes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But we'll we'll see. Uh, yeah, and hopefully, you know, we take advantage of this, but it's not going to be like walk in and just dominate this game. It's not what it is. And you talked about David Johnson. Do you have any stats or kind of where he's at? You said he's struggling, but he his last game was his best game by far. Yeah. Uh, walk me through kind of what's going on there. He's got 187 yards rushing, two touchdowns this year. He's still catching. He's catching a few balls last game. Last game, all of his production mostly came from from last week. Total of this year, like I said, he's 187 yards rushing, two touchdowns. He's uh, got one touchdown in passing game, 104 yards. And, yeah, it's just his PF grade is pretty low, too. It's out of 56.0. So. Yeah, he's struggled pass protecting, which I, I saw – you know, David Ubbin, who does great work covering the Cardinals, a beat writer out there, but he talked about how <laughs> David Johnson, they pulled him off on the most important play of the game's third and two, and they're going to run it up the middle, and they pull him off the field. And it's just like, what is wrong with you? And the running backs coach came out and said, hey, well, we pulled him off the field because the play before he missed his pass protection scheme. Uh, he had a bad block, so on and so forth. That's great. You coach after the game, not during the game. Let your best player run the ball up the middle. Don't hand it to Chase Edmonds when the game's on the line. Yeah, that, that was that was a very questionable call there. And, and that's that's who these guys are. Like, okay, we get it. David Johnson's not great at pass protection. He's one of the greatest uh, route runners and receivers out of the backfield that we've had in the past decade. 
why don't you keep your tight end in and let him run the routes? But uh, hopefully they don't get smart this week. And hopefully, I, I just get upset, you know, as a as a former coach, when you see just questionable, coaching matters. <laughs> and you, you see these coaches ruin their team and ruin talent. It's just frustrating. Uh, but I want that to continue this week. I hope that they play terrible this week. <laughs> but it, it still irks me. I can't, I can't let it go. And what's interesting, you know, David Johnson has 56 attempts, and our guy has 41, Matt Breida. Yet Matt Breida has 100 and, what would that be, 50 yards more on, shoot, 15 less carries. So efficiency is not what they are about. But the other rookie has played really, really well, Christian Kirk, man, out of A&M. He is an absolute stud. Tell me about him. Yeah, he's been good. He's got an 80% catch rate, uh, 140 yards receiving this year. One thing I did notice, I uh, broke down where he where he lines up. Obviously, he's about 50, 52% of the time he's lined up outside. and But he does play 38% of his snaps uh, in the slot as well. So um, obviously, when Larry Fitz packs it in, Kirk's probably going to move into the slot anyway, so... Yeah, it's looking like this is going to be Fitz's last year. Um, he is struggling. His hamstring, he's not quite healthy. The scheme is bad. The quarterback play's been bad. The O-line's been bad. But Fitzgerald has not helped out. So talk to me a little bit about him and kind of what's going on there. Yeah, just his numbers are numbers are down drastically this year. He's still playing a lot. He's he's playing, you know, sixty four percent of his snaps are out of the slot. Um, but he's only he's only caught fifteen balls for one hundred forty one yards this year so far. So that's not good. I meant, I, I meant to go back and look at last year where he was after week four, but uh, never. Oh, he was a like he was leading the probably, NFL in receptions. Yeah. I think yeah. after like week five or six. Like I mean, he was up there. I don't think he was first, but. He 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 was he had two rough years about five years ago, and then Bruce Arians came in, switched him to the slot guy, and he didn't like it at first. But then he saw the targets and the scheme fit, and it was good coaching. And now it just shows you it, elite talent. I don't care how old he is; he can still perform. You get poor coaching in there, and ugh, it's just it's awful, man. I hate to see it. it's just such a waste. But and, oh, and yeah, the, he he's one of he was one of my he's he is one of my favorite players. I always in well fantasy wise, I guess you could say. <laughs> right? Yeah. There you go. So, all right, man. Well, I can't say thanks enough, Clayton. This is absolutely awesome, and and I really think that these discussions kind of help us all not only understand who the 49ers are playing, but just the X's and O's of the defense and kind of what to look for with blitz packages. Uh, offense where the players line up and just efficiency. So I just want to say thanks, man, from the 49ers Rush Podcast. You're the man. Head over, follow your man, at Kadu Clayton. Is that correct? Did I say it right? You did. I'm impressed. It's hard being from Texas, man. English is hard, let alone Canadian. That's an even tougher language. But without further ado, just want to say thanks, guys. Stay strong. We're going to get this win. We are going to get this win. Stay, stay strong, faithful. 